Why, Lassie, I think you have eyes in the back of your head. You lie down. My name is Carter, Mrs. Martin. Roger J. Carter. Oh, yes, sir. Well, we were just, um... <laughs> so I saw. Uh, this is Lassie, huh? Uh, yes. Uh, this is my son, Timmy, and his friend, Boomer. Hi. And uh, that's Mike. Uh, now, let me look at you, miss. Just like Lassie. Look at all those cups and rhythms. Yeah. That dog was the Tartan Queen. But they could be twins. <laughs> the Tartan strain of collies won every major dog show in the States for 15 years. <laughs> and then one misfortune followed another until the Tartan strain disappeared. Champion Tartan Queen was the last to go. I'd just about given up hope of finding any of her alive when I heard about Lassie. Oh, but, Mr. Carter, Lassie's not for sale. Oh, please. Please, uh, hear me out. If Lassie's a tartan, I can revive the strain. You mean Lassie'd be a show dog and win blue ribbons? Blue ribbons? She could become national champion, maybe even international. Did you hear that, Boomer? Yeah. Mr. Carter, Lassie can't be a show dog. We have no papers for her. Oh. Well, Mrs. Martin, if Lassie's ancestry is traceable, I can do it. Meantime, may I give her a look over? Yes, I guess so. Uh -huh. She's a tartan, all right. <laughs> Mr. Carter, this is a working farm. And Lassie's really a working dog. Mrs. Martin, if you have any idea what this will mean. Well, I do. I know it'll take a lot of time that we don't have. I have, Mom. Oh, Timmy, it takes a lot of work. You bet it is. For you and Lassie, too. We don't care, do we, girl? You want to be like the Tartan Queen, don't you? See? Lassie wants to be like the Tartan Queen. Please, Mom, please let us. Well, all right, if you'll really work at it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Martin. You've made me very happy. What do Lassie and I have to do, Mr. Carter? Well, she has to be groomed constantly so that every hair falls into place naturally. A coat must have that special shine that only regular grooming can give it. And she must stay close to the house. We can't risk thorns or burrs. Oh, we don't want any bruises or cuts on her paws. So it's no more work or digging for her. You know, it's a big responsibility, getting a dog into condition. Here, you can have this picture of the queen to go by. Gee, thanks. I can do it. You're beautiful, Lassie. I 
bet you're beautiful as the Tartan Queen. <laughs> She starts winning those blue ribbons. That'll be fun. Yeah. Go over to the porch. Oh, go on. Ready? Go ahead. Roll it. Did you see that, Mrs. Martin? Did you see what Mike did? <laughs> yes, I, I saw a boomer. You should be very proud of him. I sure am. Look at poor Lassie. Timmy, Lassie's a work dog. Not anymore, Mom. She's gonna be the champion of the whole United States. Don't you count your chickens before they're hatched. Mr. Carter told me. I should have been more firm with Mr. Carter. And with you. Lassie, remember about your pa? But that's where she hides her favorite bone. How'd you like if no one ever let you do anything? This isn't the same. Oh, no, you don't. That's no fair. Mike's doing all the things Lassie's not allowed. What's wrong with that? Well, he's just making Lassie feel awful. Gosh, Mike was only trying to help. If Lassie can't do it, someone has to. I don't want him to make Lassie feel bad. 
Mike can't play here, I can either. I didn't say that. You didn't have to say that. Boomer was awfully proud of Mike. Well, Mike doesn't have to show off. Just because he knows Lassie can't do any work. I don't think Boomer sees it that way. Come on, Lassie. Gosh, your hands are getting as soft as Mom's. for Lassie. I bet Lassie's lonesome, too. I put your bike in the barn so it wouldn't get rusty. Thanks, Timmy. Thanks a lot. I sure wish Lassie could play with Mike. You mean she still can't? No. But it's not Mike's fault, Boomer. Of course it isn't. It's yours. That's what it is. I'm counting stitches, dear. Now, I knew something was missing. I've been trying to figure out what it is for a week. But do we owe money? Well, no, no. It's Boomer and that dog of his. I haven't tripped over them for days. Well, did the boys have a fight? Well, um, not exactly. Is Mike jealous over Lassie's new look? <laughs> I think it goes deeper than that. Oh. And we'll fill a whole room with blue ribbons and gold cups. You'll get to be national champion. Maybe even world champion. The whole world will be proud of you. Even Boomer and Mike. Hi, Dad. That's true, isn't it? Well, it could be, I suppose. Trouble is, when a person gets to the top of the heap, it can be mighty lonesome up there. Being a champ is the best, isn't it? Sure. But there can only be one champ at a time. The trouble is, it's so lonesome. And we're not even at the top yet. <laughs> well, whatever you do, it'll have to be your decision. Oh. Well, I think the whole world ought to know what a swell dog Lassie is. You know something? It takes courage to stand by your principles and courage to change. I think you'll figure it out. Nothing to worry about. Paul Martin, you tell me what Timmy said. Oh, that's what you want to know. You know, he's so ambitious for Lassie, there's no holding him. If I had been more firm with Mr. Carter, Timmy and Lassie wouldn't be in this predicament. Suppose they do find some papers on her. Suppose they don't. Yes, but if they did, how are we going to put Lassie on the show dog circuit? Yeah, that would be a stumbling block. But let's not stumble over it until it's there to stumble over. <laughs> Sounds just like Uncle Petrie. He's my uncle, isn't he? Mm
playing tricks? Honest. Mike's lost. Lost? Mike was so lonesome for Lassie. I thought he might come here. Did I hear you say Mike's lost? Yes, ma'am. Ever since last night. I've got to help Boomer find him. I bet Lassie could find him. She can't come. Go back on the porch. Go on. I'll find Mike by myself. I'll help you. Bye, Mom. Here, Mike. I know what I'd do if my best friend was in danger. Yes, I know what I'd do, but you have to make up your own mind. Yet, Boomer, or her bed someplace. Let's look again. Here, Mike! Here, Mike! We're never gonna find him. Something happened to you, or you'd run away. Come on, Lassie. Come on. Well, Lassie can't read. I guess she's just naturally smart. Isn't she swell, boy? I'll say. Come on. Let's take the shortcut home so we can tell Mom. We'll have to wait across the creek. Who cares? Paul Martin, Mr. Carter. Glad to know you, Martin. Mrs. Martin. Is, uh, is Timmy around, or Lassie? Oh, uh, well, no, uh, n not at the moment. Seems that Lassie had an urgent errand. Well, uh, I'd rather break the news to you first. I have disappointing news. I'm finding it rather hard to tell you. Lassie's pedigree can't be traced. Oh. I've tried every avenue. Obviously, she's an aristocrat. But fate has it that her ancestry must remain a mystery. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Bye, Mom! Look at that dog. Hi, Dad. 
Hi, Mr. Carter. I had Lassie looking better than the Tartan Queen. Till today, that is. Timmy, Mr. Carter has something to say to you. But I have to tell him first, Mom. Mr. Carter, Lassie got lonely and unhappy before she got to the top of the heap. Eh? What's that? Well, then I decided not to make her the world's champion. I wanted her to be the world's champion pet. <laughs> it's just as well, because in tracing her pedigree, I... <clears throat> well, I... Uh... You know, you've put me to a lot of unnecessary work, don't you? Yes, sir. But <laughs> I can't make you sure. After all, Lassie's your dog. Lassie saved Mike's life. She dug a tunnel down to where he was stuck. She sure did, just like in the papers. Now, that's a collie for you. She had a real good time getting dirty on the way back. Uh, goodbye, girlie. <laughs> goodbye. It's been a gratifying experience, no matter what the outcome. I'm Mr. Carter. And uh, thanks. Bye, everybody, and good luck. I'm glad Mr. Carter wasn't mad at me. Well, I guess he saw that your mind was really made up. It sure was. You should have seen Lassie. She trailed Mike to an old shack and dug a great big tunnel to where he was stuck. You and Uncle Petrie don't get started soon. This dog will take off without you. Uncle Petrie, we're ready. Hold your horses, boy. I'm here. Got these out of that old trunk in the attic. Mighty handy for nature study. Gee, they're keen, Uncle Petrie. <laughs> May I carry them? Why, sure can. Hey, now you look like a real explorer. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty excited, aren't you, girl? Never knew a dog that loved to romp in the woods like Lassie does. How does she know we're taking her on the hike? Oh, that's easy for Lassie. Every time I take this old knapsack off that hook, it just means one thing to Lassie, a long hike in the woods. Well, you're mighty observing, aren't you, girl? What does observing mean? That she's smart? Yes, I guess you could say that. That's right. Lassie takes notice of little things and remembers them. Remembering little things can be mighty important sometimes. Why don't you change your mind and go with them? You'd enjoy it. No, one hand off the farm's all we can spare. I'll go another time. <laughs> sure you have enough to hold you over? Well, I guess we could feed a small army at that. But there's only one thing worse than having too much. It's not having enough. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, dear, they're growing boys. Well, partner, let's go. Thought we'd take the pickup over to the edge of the Black Woods. Wouldn't want the boy all tuckered out before we even get there. We'll be home early now. We will, don't worry. Well, your Uncle Petrie knows a lot about wildlife, so you'll have a good hike. I know. Goodbye, dear. Have a good time. Bye, Mom. In you go. And up you go. Well, certainly one thing we're not going to have to worry about. What's that? We won't have to worry about you two starving. Very funny.
Mighty handsome sight, isn't it? You know, Timmy, someday those trees will make some fine furniture. Maybe some houses. Gosh, will they cut down all those trees, Uncle Petrie? All of them? Shucks, no. Spoils the look of the forest. Besides, it's not scientific. What's scientific? Well, it's, uh, well, it's just being smart. Now, the smart way to log is take a few trees from over there and leave some standing. Then you take a few from over there and leave some standing. And so on and so forth. What good will that do? Well, the, the trees that are left standing will they'll drop their seeds and cones, so there'll always be new trees coming right along. I'm glad of that. Some places, the Forest Service even plants whole new forests right in among the trees that are left standing. They sort of shelter the young plants. That way, there'll always be a forest to take a hike in. <laughs> well, Lassie's ready and waiting, so let's go. Nothing like the smell of the woods after a good rain. Yeah, still pretty wet. That rain the other day really soaked in. Hmm. Mighty pretty, isn't it? It sure is. But I wouldn't like to be in here alone. Of course, I wouldn't be scared if Lassie was with me. Well, now, there's nothing to be scared of, boy. The woods are a real friendly place, if you understand them. Just a lot of pretty scenery and a few friendly animals. You know something, Timmy? Those animals are a heap more scared of you than you are of them. I never thought of that. <laughs> Hear it drumming? Shh, Lassie. Come on, maybe we can spot him. Give me the binoculars, boy. Yeah, there he is. Here, take a look. Right through there. Gee. What's he pounding on the log for? He's not pounding anything. Just flapping his wings so fast, he makes that noise, like a vibration. What's he doing that for? <laughs> well, just trying to make some lady grouse think that he's about the most important thing in the whole woods. You mean he's just showing off? That's right, Timmy. Why, sometimes they puff out their chests and do a silly little dance, just to attract attention, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, over by those bushes. Gosh. See how its spots sort of blend into the background? That's nature's way of protecting it, till its legs get strong enough to run, and it can take care of itself. Let's walk quietly, so we won't scare it. Yeah. Walk on your tiptoes, Lassie. Nice and dry. Reckon this'll do. Don't go too far, Lassie. There we are. You see, Timmy, the Indians never had telephones or telegraphs or things like that, so they had to figure out some way of talking to each other from long distances, like using smoke signals. Do you know how to talk with smoke signals, Uncle Petrie? Sure do. Fact is, I know quite a few of them. Got a little snack here for Lassie when she's ready. She's just off having fun in her own way.
wrong. You said it'd be a cinch. So it's taking us another day. Is it my fault? Hey, look. Where'd that dog come from? Search me, but I'm gonna get rid of it. Not so fast with that gun. It's only a dog. Sure, it's a dog. That means it's got an owner. Maybe not far off. One shot out of that gun would bring the law, but quick. I'll chase him away. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Go on, get out of here. This is getting on my nerves. One more night in this jungle and I've had it. Ah, quit your beefing. I'll go into town tomorrow and get the dough and then we'll get out of here. Always remember, Timmy, never leave an untidy camp. Well, what do you know? Hand me those glasses, boy. What is it, Uncle Petrie? Well, if it's what I think it is, it's maples. Sugar maples. Here, take a look. Right across that clearing there. What are they good for, Uncle Petrie? Sugar. Maple sugar. Yes, sir. They sure look like it. Too late now. Well, I'll just have to come back tomorrow and check those trees. Porcupine quills. All right, steady now, girl. Steady. Well, there we are. You should know better than a tangle with one of those prickly pigs, Lassie. Is your foot all right? No, oh, sure. Little quills like these don't do any harm. You better be more careful, Lassie. Yeah, I guess we better move on. Now, here's the woodcraft test for you, Timmy. Which way's home? I guess I just don't know. You sure don't. If I wasn't with you, how in the world would you ever get home? Oh, that's easy. I'd just say, Lassie, I'm lost. Take me home. That's good thinking, boy. Real good thinking. Show us the way, girl. Take us home. <laughs> I'm telling you, that one stand of maples alone will run 15 gallons a season, and I got it all figured out. We can turn a corner of the barn into a sugar house, get the evaporator pan and some sap buckets. Now, wait a minute. How much is this going to cost? Why, we can build a pan ourselves, and buckets don't cost much. We can start in a small way, and as the money comes in, we can get bigger and better equipment. Mmm, maple sugar. I can taste it right now. They're getting fancy prices for raw syrup these days. I checked on it last night. Uncle Petrie, I'm afraid you're building this up for a big letdown. Oh, Paul's right. Maybe you are. Not me. I know sugar maples when I see them, and I know what can be done with them. Well, I'm busy over at the West 40, but if you wait a couple of days, I'll go with you. A couple of days? I can't wait five minutes. I was up for the birds this morning to get my chores done so as I can leave soon as I finish my dinner. Well, <clears throat> I finished, and I'm off. It ain't exactly sugar and time, but I just got to get a little sap to run the test. So long. Bye. Bye. And good luck. Oh, my, I wish it wasn't a school day. Timmy would have loved to have gone with him. Wish you could have heard those two at breakfast. The way they were talking, you'd have thought they'd discovered a gold mine. Well, if this thing turns out as well as Uncle Petrie hopes it will, it might be just that, a gold mine. Oh, Paul, do you mm. really think so? Don't get excited. I just mean a little tiny gold mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
All right. Come here, you. What are you doing in here? I, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking at some trees. Looking at trees? For what? Let's see what kind they are. I'm, I'm going to get a little sap. Say, uh, you wouldn't be a little off your rocker, would you? Of course not. I told you, I'm here to inspect some trees. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll be going. You're not going anywhere. Get over here. Sit down. just so you don't get any ideas. I'd give 50 bucks for a hot cup of coffee right now. So one thing we didn't plan on, firewood that's soaking wet. I give up. You know, uh, you're going at that fire building all wrong. I suppose you can do better with this wet wood? Well, untie my hands. I'll show you if I can. I don't know. Okay. But don't try any funny business. I'll have this real handy. The secret's right there. See? Dry as a bone. Now first, get rid of this wet bark. Now I'll make myself some fire sticks. Put my dry wood on top of that. Now we're going to have ourselves a fire. Say, that's mighty slick. I'll open up some cans. Woods, looking at those trees. Well, if he's in the black woods, he's in trouble. Trouble? Why, right, what do you mean? I saw some smoke coming up from over there. It was like a signal. It means he's hurt or lost or something. My goodness, what an imagination. But, Mom, yesterday Uncle Petrie told me all the ways that Indians talk with smoke signals. And that's what I saw. Indian smoke signals? Oh, <laughs> what next? I saw him. Why don't you come outside and look? Oh, all right. Just wait till I finish this lettuce. But, Mom, won't you hurry? Yes, I'm coming. Hi, dear. Hi. Hi, son. How did it go today? 
Oh, everything was fine at school. But I think something's wrong with Uncle Petrie. Yesterday, Uncle Petrie taught Timmy about Indian smoke signals. Now, Timmy says he saw smoke, and he's afraid that Uncle Petrie may be signaling for help. That's right, Dad. I saw two puffs, and that means trouble. <laughs> Sure enough. I told you. I told you so. Well, that's certainly not a natural way for smoke to rise. What do you suppose it means? I don't know. Well, let me get this straight, Timmy. You say that Uncle Petrie told you that the Indian signal for trouble is two puffs of smoke? Right. That means double for trouble. Well, it might mean something, Paul. We just can't ignore it. Uncle Petrie may have broken his ankle or hurt himself in some way. Well, you're right. We can't take any chances. It's going to be hard to locate where that smoke's coming from. Timmy, do you think you can find your way back to the place where you saw the maples? I don't know. Lassie could. She knows the way out, and she can find a way in. Of course she can. Come on, I'll go over there right away. All right, we'll all go. What do you think you're doing? You're trying to make this fire smoke. Well, I, I was just trying to help. Help who? Trying to let the law know where we are? I don't let you have it. All right, Lassie. Take us to Uncle Petrie. Understand, girl? Uncle Petrie. What is it, girl? Is it Uncle Petrie? Well, if it were Uncle Petrie, she wouldn't have barked. I'm going to follow her. You two stay behind, but not too close. That you, Joe? Oh, that mud again. Beat it! <laughs> Scram! Go on, get out of here! Go on, get... Hurry, man, hurry. Uh, I gotta help Paul. I guess that one won't bother us again for a while. Oh, boy, am I ever glad to see you. Lassie's got everything under control over there. Yeah, here, you better be on the safe side. I'll watch him. Would you see if there's any rope in the car? Terrible ordeal. My name is Hanson, Robert Hanson, of the Capital City Farmers Bank. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Don't try. Who are these characters? Well, I gave them a part-time job on my farm. I guess maybe this get-rich-quick scheme appealed to them more than an honest job. You've had a pretty rough time of it, Mr. Hanson. You better get to a doctor. Ruth, would you drive him into town and then call the sheriff? Uncle Petrie and I'll stay here and guard these playboys. Uncle Petrie, I saw the smoke signals and remembered everything you told me. Good for you, Timmy. I'm mighty proud of you. Oh, I like the picture in the Calverton News best. I think it sort of flatters me. 
And not bad, but I look too serious. Is that the one that says quick thinking on the part of Petrie Martin? No, that's in the uh, Capital City Spectator. This one says, the entire Martin family joined forces and effected the rescue of a prominent Capital City citizen and so on and so forth. Here it is. Quick thinking by Petrie Martin and the alertness of a small boy foils kidnap plot. Mom, will you read that one about Lassie again, please? Lassie, their noble dog, subdued and captured the second gunman. Well, I'm mighty proud of each and every one of you, and I have a very smart little boy. I suppose you want to look at your picture again. Oh, Lassie, you'll be spoiled by all this publicity. I knew I forgot something. What's that? I never did find out about those maples. Uncle Petrie, the next time you go into the woods, you better take Lassie with you to keep you out of trouble. Oh, I sure will. How about it, Lassie? <laughs> proud of you. That took a lot of patience. That was quite an accomplishment, son. I never thought you'd do it. I couldn't teach him anything without Lassie. Anyway, Lucky's real smart when he wants to be. Pete Johnson says this county fair is going to be the biggest one we ever had. And I'm ready for it with my hybrid corn. If I say so myself, I think I'm going to win a prize. Gosh, I wish I was that sure about my preserves. I still don't know whether I should enter or not. Well, what's to stop you? You make the best apple jelly in the world, Mom. And your strawberry jam will go down in history along with the invention of the electric light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't know I had such devoted fans. Well, there's no reason why we all can't be represented at the fair. It's a matter of family pride. I know I'm entering the Whitland competition. <laughs> oh, heavens, I don't want to be a traitor to the family. Win or lose, my jam will be in there fighting. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one that's not going to be part of the fair. Oh, of course you'll be part of it. We're all one family. We'll all share in whatever credit's due. Your mother's right, Timmy. After all, take my hybrid corn, for example. Didn't you help to plant it? And what about my preserves? Who picks my apples and my strawberries? You do, don't you? Yeah. And if I win a prize in that Whitland competition, I got you to thank. I'm using that jackknife you gave me for my birthday. But I wanted to do something of my own. But son, you're still a little young. The children's competition is for 4-H club members. And you're not old enough yet for a junior member. Then what are little boys my age supposed to do? Just eat all day and sleep all night? I wondered why they even bothered to make little boys. isn't home from school yet. Oh? Is that a statement of fact or an ominous forecast? Well, he's always home by this time. I'm worried. Well, sweetheart, all young boys have lingeritis. He might have stopped over at Boomer's house on his way home. Well, do you think I ought to phone and find out? Well, I don't see any harm in... Mom! Dad! All right. Go 
ahead and say it. I will, because you've got it coming to you. I love you. Mom, Dad! Where were you? Guess what? What? I'm going to be part of the county fair. You are? Well, tell us about it. Is that why you're late getting home from school? I rode in a Calverton. Dad, you knew that dollar you gave me a long time ago? And you said I could do anything with it I wanted to? I used it to enter myself in the horse show. You entered yourself? In the horse show? How did you enter yourself in a horse show? We don't even have a horse. I entered lucky. <laughs> This is to certify that Timmy Martin has registered his entry named Lucky in the Farm Horse Grooming and Obedience Competition. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, I'm sorry, Timmy. I, I, I just couldn't help it for some reason. Now, Timmy, you've entered Lucky in the competition, but it's for horses, not for donkeys. Did the man who gave you the certificate know that Lucky isn't a horse? And uh, never was one. <laughs> He didn't ask me. He said this wasn't the only contest a boy my age could enter. So, I entered Lucky. Timmy, apparently the man wasn't aware that Lucky isn't a farm horse. He just accepted the fact, dear. He accepted my dollar, too. Uh, son, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I'm afraid you're going to find out the man made a mistake. And when he finds out... Now, don't you see, this contest is definitely for horses. Lucky's just like a horse, only smarter. But that doesn't make him a horse. He's got four legs like a horse, a tail, his head is in the same place, everything. Everything, but he's still different. I bet Lucky doesn't know he isn't a horse. But I'm afraid the judges will know, Timmy. You know something? says here in the competition rules that this is an open contest and any breed or type of farm horse can be entered. Lucky's any type. It's all right, girl. It's going to be you, me, and Lucky. What'd you have to bring that point up for? It's still a horse contest, not a donkey contest. Well, what is a donkey? I mean well, it. What is a donkey? Well, a donkey, it, it's a... Uh, well, it... Do you know? Of course I do. Donkey is... A donkey is an animal with four legs. Uh, just as I thought. Neither of you know what a donkey is. You just know what a donkey isn't. I bet the cyclopedia knows. I'll go get it. Now, what does that one say? Is anybody a lucky horse? Come on, we're waiting. Well, looks as if we've got a technicality if we want to be technical. It means yes for one side and a big no for the other. <laughs> According to the encyclopedia, the donkey, or the burro, which is smaller, belongs to the equine family. Now, equine is defined as pertaining to or resembling a horse. Now, here, finally, is horse. Now, zoological. In the broad sense, any member of the horse family, which includes donkeys, Burrows, zebras, etc. There. That's it. Then Lucky's a horse. Son, according to the encyclopedia, you could also enter Lucky in a zebra contest. Gee, it isn't that Lucky is actually a horse like other horses, but Lucky is a member of the horse family. Sort of a cousin to a horse. That means the same thing. Lucky's gonna be better than any of his other cousins at the fair. Won't he? <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> Did I hear you say donkey? Well, now, it isn't really as bad as it sounds at first, Mr. Tumulty. A donkey in a horse contest? Well, please try to see it from my little boy's point of view. It means the world to him. And technically, a... Well, a donkey is part of the horse family. It's a relative. My dear Mrs. Martin, every family has a relative they don't brag about. Well, suppose I told you that a zebra is also part of the horse family. Now, wait a minute. 
Don't tell me you got a zebra, too. Oh, don't you see, sir? The rules of the farm horse contest were made for all varieties of horses. It's an open contest. It's mostly for children, anyway. Well, there's no doubt the original error was mine. And I certainly don't want to see that nice little youngster of yours hurt in any way. Of course, you know I'll be one of the judges. Now, if your son's entry fails to come up to the competition, well, everything has got to be fair and square. Well, then, you mean it's all right? <laughs> <laughs> A donkey! <laughs> now, I want each of you to try a different flavor and tell me the truth. I'm an expert on strawberry jam. Ah, uh, crab apple jelly is my weakness. I want to try the orange marmalade. The truth now, because that's what the judges at the fair will tell. The truth. Truth. Twelve minutes and eighteen seconds. That's wonderful. How do you do it? Well, with, with just a little more practice, I can do it even quicker. Gosh, a little man. <laughs> Look at that. The most beautiful ear I ever saw. He's so big. I can't believe it. Pretty, ain't she? A sight for sore eyes. Why, Lucky could win first prize in a beauty contest. Animal. It sure is. You're both thinking what I'm thinking. I wonder if we did the right thing in letting Timmy enter Lucky. Donkey's still a donkey, and there's been a lot of beautiful horse flesh parading in there. Are you both forgetting all the tricks Timmy taught Lucky? Don't forget, this is an obedience contest, too. Looks ain't everything. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Of course I am. The judges have finished marking their points on grooming, and we will now proceed with the obedience contest.
wish I could enjoy this. I don't think anybody can follow that. Oh, dear, and it means so much to him. And now, the next contestant is Timothy Martin with his entry named Lucky. Now, this next entry needs a little explaining. Although this contest was intended for farm horses of any and all varieties, we have seen fit to extend the rules just a little more and have accepted close relatives. <laughs> Supposed to sit down until I tell you, Lucky. We haven't even started yet. Please. Oh, oh I, I just can't look. It's a fine-looking animal you've got there, and the dog, too. You must be mighty proud. I am, sir. Well, now comes the hard part. Do you think you can carry it off? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the judges have completed marking their points for grooming, and the obedience contest follows. So please, Lucky, just do what Lassie and I taught you. Okay? And don't forget. Sit down. stand this much longer. You did it just a little while ago, Lucky. Please do it now. Why don't you try some other things, young fella? Has he learned any other things? Yes, sir. Lucky can do almost anything. But mostly he likes standing still in one place. Well, I'm afraid we can't give you many points for just standing still, even if he breaks the world's record. I'll try his line, down to you? All right, Lucky. Try hard. Lie down. On your side. One minute, I'm going to cry. It's my fault. I never should have let it get this far. Pretty stupid of all of us. I'm sorry.
to me. You mustn't take it so much to heart. The important thing is that you tried, son. We're proud of you. Winning the prize isn't the important part. It's entering the competition just as you did. That's right, Timmy. Everybody can't win. Here, look at me. They just didn't give any prize for a carved finger. Had to be wood. <laughs> Everybody was laughing. Oh, but they weren't laughing at you. The faces were pointing at me when they were doing it. Well, sometimes people laugh without realizing they're hurting someone's feelings. It wasn't meant to hurt you, son. No. They were rolling in the aisles when I whittled my finger instead of that hunk of wood. And it didn't even give me a chuckle. It just didn't seem funny to me. Look, he didn't even care. I just wanted to show everybody what he could do. I think perhaps we'd better go home. I think it'd be best. Somebody, please help me. There's a fire. My prize pigeons, they'll die. Where? In the dual jet. I locked them in there to keep them safe. couldn't get in there, little girl. Not even any water around here to put the fire out. <laughs> Also, in behalf of the citizens of Calverton, I proudly award you with the second Hero Blue Ribbon. <laughs> What are you kissing me for? Why didn't you kiss them? <laughs> <laughs> 